الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد حبت فلا اٹس امپورٹنٹ دیٹ وی آر ناٹ اپریسو ٹوڈس ادرس ان آل آف دوز پیپل ہو اپریس ادرس دیٹ دے آر گن ہیو اے ہیوی پنشمنٹ فرام اللہ سبحان و تعالی ان دی ہیئر آفٹر سو یو ڈو ناٹ وانٹ ٹو بی آف دوز ہو اپریس اور اسسٹ پیپل ان اپریسنگ میننگ اسسٹنگ دیم ان ڈوئنگ رانگ ان ایول and nor do you want to be oppressed and in a very important hadith hadith al qudsi which is full of immense meaning for us i thought it would be important to read and just go through some of the benefits very quickly and this is the hadith of abi dhar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam relates from his lord so the hadith al qudsi who said oh my servants I have forbidden injustice for myself and have forbidden it amongst you so do not oppress one another O oh my servants all of you are astray except for those who I have guided so seek guidance from me and I will guide you O oh my servants all of you are hungry except for those I have fed so seek food from me and I will feed you O oh my servants all of you are naked except for those I have clothed So seek clothing from me and I will clothe you. O oh my servants, you sin by day and night and I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness from me and I will forgive you. O oh my servants, you will not be able to bring harm to me and you will not be able to bring benefit to me. O oh my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you to be as pious as the most pious heart of any one of you. that would not increase my dominion at all. O oh, my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, to be as wicked as the most wicked heart of any one of you, that would not decrease my dominion at all. O oh, my servants, were the first of you and the last of you, the human of you and the jinn of you, to rise up in one place and to make a request of me. And were I to give everyone what he requested, that would not diminish what I have any more than a needle would diminish the sea if put into it O oh, my servants it is only your deeds that i record for you and they recompense you for let he who finds good praise allah and let he that finds something else blame no one but himself ruahu muslim this is a hadith in sahih muslim habita billah and this hadith has immense fawaid immense benefits that we can take from and the key benefit is that we should not be oppressive and we should be in the law to Allah not be oppressed from the benefits of this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this hadith that he reported on his lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is first it shows us the mercy of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the immense mercy of Allah for his saving servants and this is because all throughout the hadith Allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh addressed us his servants by saying ya ibadi Ya ibadi O oh, my servants so this shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is immensely merciful to us who have so many wicked sins so many misdeeds so many ways in which we oppress ourselves and oppress others and that we are in need of our Lord tabarak wa ta'ala another benefit of this hadith ahabat fila is this hadith shows us Uh, it affirms for us the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has divine asma asma al husna that he has uh, divine names and attributes and he is the most high tabarak wa ta'ala another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the impermissibility that is haram to oppress people it is haram and that on the day of judgment that that oppress oppression will come back and it will be in it will be multiplied for the one who oppress and it will be darkness so this shows us the immense uh wickedness that such a major sin of oppression that in it, what it entails uh another benefit of this hadith that we learn from this hadith is this hadith shows us that the asl of insan is jahl that the asl or the origin of people is that we're ignorant and that we have a adam ma'rifah that we have a lack of knowledge about how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
properly and that we are in need of talib al-ilm. We are in need of learning about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and how to worship him properly and seeking hidayah, <coughs> seeking hidayah from our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the servant is forever in need of Allah Tabaraka wa ta'ala and humbling his or herself before their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the importance of supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and that uh, that one should supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with uh, sincerity, <coughs> with ikhlas and sidq, with truthfulness. And if one is sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with truthfulness, then bi'idnillah ta'ala they will have hidayah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you truly are sincere in your heart to accept the truth and you are uh, you and, and you are sincere in your worship and directing this worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking him for guidance in your affairs then he will give you uh, tawfiq he will give you success in that affair of guidance another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that uh, it, it warns us that we should not depend upon the asbab. We should not depend upon uh, our striving on things, but rather we should put our trust in Allah. And this goes back to the many times we've mentioned about the definition, one of the definitions that the scholars mention around the concept of tawakkul. When we say tawakkul ala Allah, trust in Allah. Tawakkul ala Allah, habita fillah. Tawakkul ala Allah, huwa itimad ala Allah, wa fi'l asbab. That it is relying solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making effort. So if you want to become wealthy, you need to seek your rizq, you need to get a job, or you need to uh, sell things, or you need to get into business, or you need to be digging for gold. You need to be making effort to find your rizq. And then putting your heart, which is an act of, uh, it's ibadah qalbiya, it's a, a, a type of worship which, which deals with our heart. You put that, your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you rest that the result is with Allah. You made every effort to attain something and you leave, put your heart and your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that uh, you will get the natija, you will get the end result. So this hadith shows us the importance of putting our trust in Allah and not in our efforts. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us the immense forgiveness and mercy and favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that he forgives all, all sins, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the bab of toba of repentance, is open for us all. He forgives everything as long as you don't die upon kufr and shirk, if you don't die upon disbelief. And, the, and shirk al-akbar, the major shirk which takes you out of the fold of Islam, you need to die upon the worship of Allah. You need to die upon Tawheed. And we know this because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fi kitab al kareem which also addressing us as his servants, qala subhana, <clears throat> in the same way as mentioned in this hadith, qal, qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim, la taqnutu min rahmatillah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zumr, He says, Say, O my servants who have wronged themselves, do not despair at the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Verily, He is the most forgiving. And the most beneficent or the most merciful, Tabarakwa Ta'ala. Allah Tabarakwa Ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al Kareem, also in another ayah, which shows us, also affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins, illa shirk, except shirk, shirk al Akbar, dying upon it. Qala subhana, inna Allah la yaghfiru an yushrik bih, wa yaghfiru ma duna thalika liman yasha. Verily, Allah forgives. Uh, verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with him. You know, polytheism. But he forgives other than that for whomsoever he pleases. So any other sins, you can be forgiven if you die upon that. Insha yaghfirulik. Wa insha yu'adhubak. If he wills, he will forgive you. If he wills, he will punish you. 
But as long as you die upon Tawheed, even if you were Tawheed and you committed zina, Tawheed you committed homosexuality, Tawheed you committed this, Tawheed you stole this, Tawheed you oppressed this one, you can still be forgiven by your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala even if you died upon that sin. And as long as you are from Ahl Tawheed, you'll be, if you are punished, you'll be taken out of the fire and eventually enter paradise. And that is the reward of Ahl Iman. Another benefit of this hadith, Ahabatifillah, is this hadith shows us the immense hajja or the immense need that all of us as the children of Adam have for seeking forgiveness uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and as the minhaj of the salaf al salih ridwan allahi alayhim sahaba to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anim ajma'in that this is their minhaj this is their methodology they were ahla istighfar they were ahla uh, ahla iman wa ahla tawbah they sought tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They sought istighfar. They made adhkar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were the best in the ibadah. So that is the minhaj of the salaf. And that's what we have to strive to be on that minhaj. May Allah forgive us of our many, many, many shortcomings. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Another benefit of this hadith, ahabat tifillah, is this hadith shows us the immense, uh, that, that, that our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just. And he is perfect in his divine names and his divine attributes tabarakwa ta'ala another benefit of this hadith ahabat tafillah is this hadith shows us the importance of a'mal al of the deeds of the heart this shows us the importance of our of the deeds of the heart a'mal al that this is a part of iman and this is a part of uh, uh, and this is something we should focus on that the tarbiya wa tasfiya you know, the educative effect in doing righteousness and goodness and gaining, uh, doing talib al-ilm, increasing our knowledge of Islam and how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that we should be trying to purify ourselves, purifying our hearts. Uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, قال إن الله لا ينظر للقلوب إن الله لا ينظر لأجسادكم ولا إلى صورتكم ولكن ينظر للقلوبكم وأعمالكم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Verily Allah does not look to your 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 shape or your shak you know how beautiful you are, how handsome you are, how how um if you're a model, if you're this or you're that, or or if you're you're other than that, you're not attractive. Allah doesn't look to that. Allah doesn't care. We get involved in those things. We get caught up in those things. But rather, He looks to your hearts and your deeds. How beautiful is your heart? How clean is your heart? How is your heart filled with iman and tawheed, with sunnah? Do you have a love for the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you follow his Sunnah? Or do you follow the Ahl Takfir and the people of Munkar and the people of sin and wickedness who spread fold and sin and destruction and death around the world? Do you follow them? Or do you follow Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah? Do you follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? And if you love Allah, do you love the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? If you love Allah, then follow the Prophet وسلم, and Allah will love you. So your heart should be filled with those things, with the love of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the love of the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and the love for the believers and the love for sharing Islam and the love for doing sadaqah and the love for, for, for reading the Quran and the love for reading and practicing the Sunnah and the love for doing good deeds in its various forms and a love for giving charity and a love for giving da'wah and a love for doing anything and everything which is good in Islam Islam according to the book in the Sunnah and a love for practicing the Sunnah and avoiding bid'ah and a love for Ahl Sunnah and not a love for the people of bid'ah this is what's going to help purify your heart that is really the cleanliness of the heart may Allah clean our hearts may Allah protect us may Allah bless us to be of those of Ahl Iman who do not give up on him and who he does not give up and leave we need Allah so seek forgiveness with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.